All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the, uh, the Aloha Press Show. My name is JC, joined today with my co-host Jeff. Dude, it, we had the Arnold Palmer Invitational last week, and we had kind of a, I don't want to say a limited field. They called it an invitational field, but really not a lot of the top guys in the world were there. For example, Dustin, Brooks, JT, I mean, just some of the guys that, you know, would show up to these major, major events. And this week we've got the Players' Championship. But I'm assuming you already know that it's the Players' Championship because they've been running commercials about it for the last three fucking months, bro. It This is all I fucking have heard. I The greatest thing about the Players' Championship week is not the Players' Championship week. It's the following week where I don't have to pay attention to their stupid fucking commercials. Like, I've seen Hole 17 15,000 fucking times, and now it's here. It's TPC Sawgrass, Players' Championship. It is It is back. Well, you're, you're right, because all the commercials showed was Jason Day winning at some point, giving a spiel, Roy McIlroy winning at some point, giving a spiel, and then Ricky Fowler winning at some point, giving a spiel. That's all it was. It's here. It's now. Um, I'm very excited to watch it. Uh, this is the week last year where shit got real and COVID hit, and we stopped after one round, and they told the guys, get your shit and go home, um, and then our worlds all flipped upside down. You know, we just got back from Pebble Beach. Um, and not to mention Hideki Matsuyama went out and shot 63 on day one and was killing it. And then they said, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Your round doesn't count. You got her done. Uh, I feel for that guy. I hope, I hope he brings it this week. I think that was the last good round he had, like it's yeah. <laughs> kind of sad, but uh, what's, what's crazy about the players championship is just the simple fact that Roy McIlroy, who's a major championship winner, has won on all continents. It's just, it's the toughest field in golf. And looking back, like the players championship, the great thing, the draw for me is they offer these guys so much cash that it doesn't, if you're invited to this thing, if you're a part of this thing, like there's no reason not to go play it because they're looking at a purse of $15 million. I mean, it's the biggest cash grab for the most part, uh, you know, except the FedEx cup, you know, the playoffs and all that bullshit, but it's, it's not even a golf course that to be honest, I, I enjoy watching like hole 17 is not, I mean, it's okay. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. A lot of water. It just seems like these guys are going to go real low, but you're right. I mean, this is definitely a monumental event this week, this year. Last year was absolutely crazy. It was golf was the, like the last sport that actually shut down and they kind of gave the excuse like, Oh, everyone's outside. It'll be fine. Like this pandemic is no big deal. And here we are a year later, we've got fans back. I mean, another big week, the players championship. I mean, what are some of the things that you look forward to this week? Is it hole 17? Is it just the actual like field of golf or is it just maybe some of the content that's going to be, you know, no longer shown next week? I, I do look forward to hole 17 just because it, it is tough at times when the wind's blowing. But the main thing I look forward to this week is, is I look forward to a weekend full of top names. I want to see eight, nine, 10 guys in the mix come Saturday, Sunday. I don't want this two man race. I want to see guys come from behind. I want to see guys make it interesting. I hope we get that. You've got the best players in the world there. Um, I just I just pray for something like that. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to be up in Tahoe. Give me something to bet on. Give me something to bet on on the weekend. Give me something to bet on on Sunday. Um, I'm going to be glued to my TV. Hopefully, you know, we'll see. <laughs> I think I think you're going to be glued to a hangover. That's going to be quite honest. Awesome. Right. That's what's going to be uh, happening. It's – Jeff, I mean – I. It's, it's one of those weeks that's, that's really cool because we do get a giant, you know, very, very strong field. It seems like, is it, is it the fifth major? No, it's, it's, for me, it's not. It's not that exciting. If I was going to name any fifth major, it definitely wouldn't be this one. Um, I, I would almost say it's Riviera. But this particular week, is 17 the most exciting hole in golf? No, it's not. I, I hate to say it. There's, there's more iconic holes. But I do look forward to that, that strength of field. Unfortunately, starting this week, Brooks Kepka has withdrawn from the event. Uh, if you, you would have known that if you read the Golf Email newsletter. Um, he, he withdrew not because he's playing with Patrick Reed. They did announce uh, on Sunday that they were pairing up him and Patrick Reed together, which, by the way, would have been the best pairing, especially after the events these last couple of weeks. Brooks Kepka is playing absolutely incredible golf. Patrick Reed's playing pretty good golf. Brooks Kepka is the guy who's willing to call out people and actually talk shit to guys on the tour and sure enough, he's not going to be there this week because he's he's claiming some type of knee strain, which is, to be quite honest, to be rather disappointing. 
it's very disappointing. I do believe he strained his knee because I believe he works out a little bit too much right now and is probably doing too many lunges, squats, box jumps, whatever he's doing. He needs to just lay off of it so he can be there every week for us. Uh, but you're, I, hey, I'm an avid reader of the newsletter. Um, I read it every time it comes out, two, three times a week. Uh, and you had me dying. I was cracking up because I already knew Brooks had, had withdrawn. Uh, but then I read your explanation of why, and it made total sense. Maybe you're right. Maybe he saw P. Reed as his playing partner for the first two rounds, and he said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm done. Uh, who knows? I, he's already struggling with an injury. Like, come on. Do you want that headache too? I mean, what, what are these guys really – amping up to and maybe it's maybe it's something that you know Brooks Kepka got back into that competitive spirit you know because several weeks ago he said he wanted to win you you reported on it that he was itching to get back to that victory circle and he did at waste management so why even why even deal with the bullshit now I'm not saying he's not addicted to cash because I think he is but if he is hurting a little bit like why chance it deal with Patrick Reed's bullshit and risk even further injury or strain to not be able to show up to a major championship like a real major, like the Masters, here in a couple couple, couple weeks. No, it, it's totally understandable. It sucks he's not going to be there, I, but I'm all for it uh, if that means he can play in Augusta because I'd much rather have him be there than struggle through this week and be hurt or be hurt, you know, try to play the Masters hurt. Hey, get healthy, get right, be there. We're not going to have Tiger. You know, Brooks is probably one of the next – him and Bryson are the next two biggest things for us viewing-wise. So get healthy and be there. It's okay. You were my pick. You were my pick last week. Um, you were my pick this week until you withdrew. I mean, I picked you in a tournament you weren't even playing in. I was so confident. Um, if you watched the outtakes last week, <laughs> you know, sometimes I make mistakes. I don't do my homework. Um, you know, this week I've got a good pick. I, well, I thought it was a good pick, but you told me some shit before the show. But, uh, you know, we'll go from there. You get first pick. You're riding high right now. The, we have eliminated the four-bottle lead. It is back to zeros. You've got first pick. Who's winning the players? Well, it's it's definitely not Rory McIlroy because good God, he after the Arnold Palmer Invitational, he absolutely, it guy, he looked like a kicked puppy. Like he's talking about, ah, oh, you know, sometimes I'm riding these highs and then I've got some of these lows. Like something needs to change. He couldn't even describe it in words. He was saying words that I couldn't even understand. I think in Rory McIlroy's camp, something's happening, and I think something big is going to change. It's either he's firing his buddy, which is his caddy. He's either getting a divorce. Maybe he's got a girlfriend on the side. I don't know. These are things that I'm just making up, but I don't have any uh, firsthand knowledge, but something's got to change for him, but he's still playing crazy good golf. I mean, he doesn't seem like he gets out of the top 10 very often, but it's not Roy McIlroy. I'm definitely not taking Roy McIlroy, but I'm going to ride a hot streak. You know, normally I take a guy who's, who's definitely, you know, is going to play just a crazy good golf. And there was, there was someone that I thought I, and I was like, you know what? It's simply him riding this hot streak. I initially was going to pick Jordan Spieth. I initially was. And then I remembered one small fact about TPC Sawgrass. They have oceans out of that fucking golf course. And Jordan Spieth didn't hit. He hit probably four fairways uh, in the last four rounds of golf we played. So I'm going with the hefty, angry banger, John Rahm. I mean, it's time for some redemption. Apparently, he had a 54-hole lead back in 2019 after closing out a 76 to finish T12. You know, it, he's constantly in the mix, and I, I'm going with well, I'm going with a hot hand out at uh, out at TBC, and I'm, I'm again I'm going with John Rahm this week to uh, to get the victory. So, hey, that that's a great pick. Um, you know, I've, I've I write my picks down most of the time. I didn't do it last week, and that's when I make a mistake. So I made sure I, I wrote my pick down this week. Um, and I don't know if anybody can see it here on my uh, friend's notepad, but it says, Rory, my pick. Um, you might have given me a little bit of information that would change my mind, but I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stick with him. I'm going to ride him. He, he's coming off a rough round on Sunday. Uh, I think that he's got a chance. I think he's going to find it. He's going to snap out of this, this little funk he's in. And, you know, we're not playing the pity party, Rory. We're not playing it. You got fans back. There's no more excuses. Go out. I don't care if you win the golf tournament, Rory. I really don't. Just beat John Rahm. Please, just beat John Rahm. Get me back a, a bottle of booze. Get me up one. You know, I just, I just relinquished four because you picked the winner. So let, let, let's find a way. Rory McIlroy all day.
Well, the good news is is Roy McIlroy sits at thirteen to one. John Rahm is sitting at fifteen to one. We're clearly not going into the deep dark circle of odds. I mean, you you could be as as tempting as as go with CT Pan at three fifty to one, or you could even go as far as Stuart Sink four hundred and fifty to one, um, or even Scott Harrington at one thousand to one. I mean, if you want to if you want to turn a dollar into a thousand dollars. You might as well pick Jerry Kelly. I don't know who Jerry Kelly is or Jimmy Walker. I mean, I think Jimmy Walker was one of your picks a couple of weeks ago who uh, was planning on missing the cut, which he did. Um, but a couple of guys at the top is definitely, it's going to be Dustin Johnson, 12 to one. Bryson DeChambeau, again, uh, looking for a back-to-back victory, 13 to one. And and to include Justin Thomas, Colin Morikawa, both 16, 20 to one. And even like Webb Simpson, Xander Shoffley, all sitting at 20 to one. It's uh, it's gonna be a great field. It's gonna be a great week. Uh, even even a hit on Hideki, he's thirty six to one. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there who are playing really good golf, and there's definitely some ways to make some cash. Um, another story that came out of Sunday at the Arnold Palmer Invitational was Bryson DeChambeau's got this idea of of instead of you know hitting a traditional golf shot, you know, on hole eighteen at TPC, he's gonna decide to hit it over the pond. Uh, to hold nine's fairway and then hit it into 18's green. Jeff, I, I, maybe I need to open my mindset and maybe open my brain when it comes to me looking at golf courses because I just don't look at golf course and go, you know, I'm going to play over there and then I'm going to play over there because it gives me a better angle. I don't know if it's just his distance or he's just a psychopath and is just drawing headlines. Well, it- it's absolutely his distance because if you think about it, think about our home course where we grew up playing golf. There's a few, there's a few holes that run next to each other that you could do something like this on. And one that, uh, that comes right to my mind is number 10 out of Castle Oaks, right? If you're long enough, you can play over the pond right towards the number one fairway and have a great angle into that green. Not a lot of guys can carry that pond. Not many at all that I know. Maybe, maybe John Fusum and, and, you know, Jared Vota, who I play with now, and, and Bryson DeChambeau. But if I could do that, that's not a bad line to take. I get, where he's, I get where he's coming from. He's seeing things that nobody else sees because he hits the ball farther than everybody else. And, and hey, I would do the same thing if I get the ball that far. It's crazy. And, and what's, what's unique about Bryson DeChambeau, especially at this, this week, is if he continues to drive the ball as straight as he is, I don't know. I don't know how you, how you stop a guy. And, and again, like the crazy thing to me is like, there's often times where he pulls out the big stick and he can hit it three four. He can carry it three forty and hit it to three seventy. But then other times he can dial it back and hit it like two eighty to 300. And he's super accurate. And it's just, God, it just drives me crazy. But the thing that shocks me the most is when he's got a short par four that he can't go for, or there's too much trouble, or if there's, it's just not fitting in shop shape or he can hit a six iron like 240. Like that's, what's crazy. I mean, he hit a, an eight iron 205 out at hole two at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. It's just, it's just mind blowing how far he can hit the golf ball. Well, I know we're not going to talk about the Arnold Palmer anymore, but that was one thing that caught my eyes. Like he, he was able to maneuver the golf ball low, high, right, left, however he wanted to. And he was hitting, hitting a bunch of knockdowns in the greens and his distance was awesome. Uh, yeah. But to hit an eight iron that far, I mean, it's just a different game, man. It's a different game. He, he, he does. He, he dials back that driver when he needs to. And it seems like, Oh, he, he probably doesn't hit it that far. These guys are right next to him, but he does it intentionally to hit the fairway. And, and he's just, he's just that much better. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins again this week. I really would. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be, but at the same time, like, I keep thinking back, and there's one guy who doesn't he doesn't go head to head with a lot. Dustin John, I mean, I hate to say, it, but it was it was he's tough not to pick every week, but it's because he's just playing such good golf. He is, he is tough. When I and when I looked at the odds and I saw his name up there, I wanted to take him. I really did. Uh, something's drawing me to Rory. I don't know what it is. I picked him two weeks ago. Um, he didn't play very well. He played better the next week. Um, I, I'm just I'm. I'm just riding the train. I really am. I've seen you pick two winners this year so far. I'm, I'm trying to get on it. I, I got to feel it's his turn somewhere around here. Would I like to see him win at Augusta? Absolutely. I want to see him get that career major, you know, the, uh, the grand slam. Um, let's just start this week, Rory. Let's start this week. Well, I mean, shit, he's the defending champion. It's uh, he won it in 2019. 
He's, I, I mean, absolutely. I, I think he's a great pick. Um, I think he's, you know, for a guy last week at Bay Hill, he drove it almost as far as Bryson. And he's got the distance and the speed. And that's what's incredible about him is if he gets his freaking head out of his ass and maybe stop, you know, posting commercials about, you know, TPC Sawgrass and maybe, you know, pimping out his stupid golf show that no one watches. Um, maybe, maybe he'll get a victory this week. I hope not. I think John Rom's going to get it done. Uh, and if John Rom doesn't get it done and mm-hmm. I need him to blow up on hole 17, to be quite honest, if he's out of it, I need him. I need him to blow up like mm-hmm. final group. Like my dream final group, to be honest with you, would be Roy McIlroy, John Rom just battling. And then, you know, the implosion from both of them on hole 17, you know, having to hit freaking pitching wedge into that hole would be, would be just remarkable. Well, hey, I hope the listeners give you some picks this week. And if anybody wants to throw some money on the weekend, Venmo me. Let me know. I'll get it done up in Tahoe for you. I'll hit a couple of the sports books up, um, and we'll go from there. Because Eddie used to be the man. I mean, he picked a bunch of winners last year, but you've taken that over. You're solid right now. Just uh, I'm either I'm either picking winners or, or guys who uh, may miss the cut. It's Jeff. I'm I'm not very consistent. When when I hit the uh, the freaking lotto, it's it's big. But uh, so that's that's TPC. I-